What's up, what's up, what's up everybody? Hey, Chris Record here and welcome back to another episode of the 90 Day Challenge. And today I've got a special guest with me, Kenny Klein. And today's topic is gonna be Shopify SEO, search engine optimization for your Shopify store. And um, before we dive into it, because mm -hmm. I know we got a lot to share mm -hmm. over the next 30 or 45 minutes, um, people may not know who you are. So let's mm -hmm. take a second uh, for everybody watching, introduce yourself and a little bit about your background when it comes to search engine optimization and your agency and what you're doing. So you guys, welcome. I introduce you to Kenny Klein. What's up, up everybody? Glad to be here. Uh, I'm coming here today from Brooklyn, New York. Uh, really glad to hang out with Chris and the Tech Academics team. Uh, what I do is really 100% SEO focused. Uh, I do all the other, you know, Facebook marketing, the branding, all of that. Um, but all of my really core business is focused on SEO. And so what I do is I rank great terms in Google, and it just ends up being free traffic. It takes some time to get there, it takes some expertise to get there, but once you're there, once you're getting those keywords, either you're ranking your products or your category pages or your blog posts, uh, then you get this continual source of traffic to your site. So it's just it's a big game changer for a lot of businesses. Awesome. So so far, the first kind of two weeks, what we've really covered in the 90 Day Challenge was focusing on Facebook advertising mm -hmm. as a paid source of traffic. We've talked a little bit about boosting posts to be able to get them good engagement mm -hmm. and then running website conversion ads. Mm -hmm. We generally are running um, $5 a day ads. Mm -hmm. So they're very inexpensive, $5 a day, trying to get purchase conversions, trying to get people to buy products. Mm -hmm. um, and really everything has been based around you know conversion rates. So can I spend $10 and can I make 15 or 20 mm -hmm. and having that be scalable and sustainable. What you teach is really cool for everybody, I think, now, which is how to prepare their Shopify store and their brand and their positioning to get free traffic, traffic mm -hmm. they're not paying for, in which case there's like nearly 100% ROI. I mm -hmm. mean, once it might cost a little bit of money and, and especially time, energy, mm -hmm. and resources, but once you get a ranking in Google for, let's say, a term, one of your products or something like that, mm -hmm. You're getting daily free traffic, and if that traffic converts, you might be getting sales of your product every single day mm -hmm. for free. Yeah, at no cost. Yeah. So let's talk a bit about the the benefit of free traffic, and if if we show people how to start setting this up, mm -hmm. do they see results today? Do they see results tomorrow? Is it short term, long term? Tell us mm -hmm. a little bit about free traffic and how it works. So the thing about free traffic is you want to start once you have your store. So you you have that store, it's making some money, or you're really you're really uh, focused on it. Um, you want to start setting up today and you want to be consistent in your effort. But it's not a eight hours a day sort of thing. It's 20 minutes a day, 10 minutes a day. Be consistent because you don't get the results day one. Mm -hmm. You're setting yourself up for day for six month, 12 month success. So it's not what you want to hear. Um, what's great is you pair it with an e-commerce store where you're making money right away from your Facebook ads, from other things that you're doing. If you do this, along with that, and then six months from now, you start to really ring for some terms. Not only are you, you know, your margins are just gonna increase, your store's gonna increase, there's getting all this free traffic, um, but you have a, a business that you can really rely on and start launching even more and more products and ranking those more easily. So it's kind of like be consistent with your effort, start early, but wait for the results. Exactly, now in this 90 day challenge, what we have is we have basically, um, three milestones for people to hit. Mm -hmm. So during 90 days, everybody that hits $100 in sales with their store is part of group one. Mm -hmm. Everybody that hits over $1,000 in sales is part of group two. Mm -hmm. Everybody hits over 10,000 in sales is part of group three. So everybody's kind of going for those big sales. Mm -hmm. So the main focus is on immediate sales here in the 90 day challenge. Mm -hmm. But I felt that it was very valuable to bring you out because what they could be doing right now is preparing their Shopify store mm -hmm. to be able to get recurring revenue, um, free traffic, free revenue, but it might take months. They may not start to see the actual results of SEO during the 90 day challenge, mm -hmm. but six months from now, if they position it right, they mm -hmm. might start doing it. And there's something called aging. In the, in the SEO world, um, if you have like a domain name, it's better if a domain name is aged. It's better if things are aged. If you just start something brand new, Google has no track record of it. But if you, um, but if you have basically like, uh, uh, like a good, well-established brand that's been going for like a year or two years or whatever it is, Google starts to see you a little bit more as an authority and starts to rank you better. So you have to look at your Shopify store as a baby store that is just, you've got a brand new do domain name, you've got brand new products in there, brand new pages, you've got to turn it into an authority. You've got to let Google know, hey, 
We are an established store. We are an authority. We are, uh, you know, we're, we're popular. And the way you do this is number one, time, aging. It's gonna take time. So what I see a lot of people make a mistake of early on is they don't see a lot of sales from their Shopify store and they look at the monthly fee mm -hmm. and they cancel their Shopify store, they cancel their monthly mm -hmm. fee. Um, I see it all the time. I'll, I'll be going through search results. In fact, live the other day, I was going through and I said, oh look, here's a Shopify store ranking number one for this term. I clicked on it and the store was canceled. Mm -hmm. And I just look at that and go, man, if they wouldn't have canceled that store, it probably took six months for them to get that number one listing. But then mm -hmm. once they got it, that reels in traffic ongoing, mm -hmm. but they canceled their store. Right. How important is it for people to keep their monthly payment going, age their store, so that these results kick in later? It's incredibly important. I mean, give very least give yourself the option. Um, you know, what, it's 29 bucks a month, something mm -hmm. like that. I would, I would keep that, you know, all year long. If you come back to it a year later, it's just going to be easier and easier from an SEO perspective to, to make it a success. Mm -hmm. So I would say just stick with it, even if you're not working on the store day to day, even if you, you know, life gets busy or you, you, know, you don't have time, if you know you're coming back to it, you need to keep that store active because you can, you know, you'll, it'll make your results a lot more easier if you're working with a six month old site even. Okay, so keep your site active. One of the big things you can do is keep your site active. Do not let your plan cancel. Now, not only if your site's active, if it's aged, if you've been building some SEO for it and you've been building some traffic to it, somebody might come along and buy it as well. So you want to keep your site active. Investors are going to look and see the age of your site. So a lot of people think, oh, I'm not getting sales right away. But you're still building authority. You're still building a site. So what are some basic high level, let's imagine people are beginners, mm -hmm. okay? What are some high level ideas for what they can do to build authority with their store? What are some things they could do Anything that comes to mind, plus anything uh, SEO related, and I know obvious things would be like links mm -hmm. and credibility and stuff like that. What are some general beginner tips you give to people for their store to be able mm -hmm. to build that authority? So there's two big things uh, when it comes to SEO, two, two big um, sections. One is what you do on your site. The other is what you do off of your site. So on site is where you should definitely start. You need to start doing that day one. And this is just getting the content on your site to be optimized. So it's just putting the right uh, title tags in, put, putting your images with the right labels for all of your products, even looking in, and making your products really specific. So if you have certain colors, making sure that all of that's set up so you can show up for you know this product red, this product blue, all of that sort of stuff. Um, getting all of your site optimized that way is very important for day one. Other thing I would do is you want to start using that blog. I know you talked about blogging uh, in some of the other videos as well. Very, very important for you to really start with your blog and start early. You don't have to do it, you know, you don't need three blog posts a day, but get it right, re regularly uh, posting on there, make it very relevant to your topic, to your niche, make it some unique content uh, that's high quality. It doesn't have to be the, the, you know, it's not the New York Times, but make it a good quality article, and that, that alone is gonna start generating some uh, authority for the site. The other big side of it is links. So if you can go links and even, you know, go to your friends, ask for your blogs if you're, uh, you know, in local scene, you can get local links from other businesses or relevant businesses. And we're even going to show you a strategy today where you can go out to people uh, in your relevant niche um, and ask them and really incent them to link back to your site. Because links are what really drive uh, a lot of SEO once you have the on-site set up. And, and it, you know, what you said, when you have investors looking at your site, that's one thing they're going to really look at. If you have a lot of links coming to your site, they know you're legit, they know you're for mm -hmm. real, and you know, they're gonna put a big premium on that for sure. Awesome, so if you're taking notes right now, you should be looking at on-page SEO and off-page SEO. And what you should do is probably on your notes, put a line down the middle of the page on the left, put on-page SEO, and the right, put off-page SEO. And like Kenny said, immediately, immediately, today, start with on-page SEO, it's in your control. Off-page SEO takes a little bit more time and some of it is out of your control, but on-page SEO is in your control. So before we move to the strategy, mm -hmm. what are some high-level examples of, let's start with on-page SEO. Mm -hmm. When it comes to like a Shopify store, mm -hmm. what are some examples of things they can do themselves mm -hmm. today to help improve the SEO on page. So what's what's really great about Shopify as a platform is that they have a lot of stuff built in there for you. So this is not a technical, you know, there's no coding, there's no any of this stuff. You just have to utilize the Shopify platform as it is. Uh, one of the first things you do is just naming your products. So just naming it 
uh, obviously you're going to want to rank for that type of product, right? And so making sure that you have the name, you know, making that optimized uh, in terms of exactly what it is and, and, you know, not kind of going off the handle with things that are not relevant. Second, just in the description, how you describe this product, in addition to selling the product, you want to use some of these keywords. So if you have multiple colors, you want to mention the colors. If there's, you know, certain materials that it's made of, you want to mention these materials, you know, because people are Googling for these things. They're saying, oh, I want this fishing rod, you know, aluminum that's red or whatever. All of these things are going to come up in long tail searches. And if you, you, if you don't mention it in the description or the title, you don't even have a chance. You're not in the game. Um, so those are big things. Another big thing is reviews. Reviews are very important for uh, showing up in the results. And so you want to get as many reviews as you can to these products. Um, so really, day one, focus on the product page. Day two, go one level up and start creating collections. So what type of uh, products do you have and who are they for? Those are the two big questions that I ask. So if you have a collection of fishing rods, you know, are these for a certain type of fishing? Or are they for a certain type of you know, geography or all this? Start making collections and naming the collection that way and then pulling the products in. So you have five products for this group, five products for that group. Um, these are really going to help fuel a lot of SEO uh, opportunity uh, on your site. Got it. So product pages, individual product pages, you have the product title, you have the product description, um, you have elements on the page itself, um, every, all the text that you have on the page, all of that. So you have all this on-page SEO. And then you also have collections. So once you go to product level, then you move over to the collection level, the organization of those products. That's another page in itself that might be, like you said, instead of saying fishing poles or fishing bait, you might ask yourself, instead of one collection called fishing bait, you might want to go in and say, OK, is this certain type of bait or hooks or whatever it is good for a certain type of fish, bass fishing, for example, or whatever it might be, freshwater fishing, um, or a certain type of fish. As you start to use more keywords in your collections and more keywords in the titles of your individual pages, that is a great way to begin ranking um, for those individual pages. Like you said, also reviews. So outside of the title and the description for things, there's also user-generated content um, where you can actually have comments available on your, on your pages or reviews or anything where somebody else is providing content and information. Now, each individual page is like a sales page. So first and foremost, your individual product page, goal number one, treat it like a sales page. That's goal number one. Goal number two is the SEO benefits. So you're not gonna like stuff a bunch of keywords in there just to try to rank. You're not gonna say, suddenly you're gonna like, oh, okay, so if I'm selling these shoes, I'm gonna say orange, Hurley, tennis, shoes, yellow, laces, running, jogging, hiking, camping, shoes, discount, best, wholesale price. Right? You, you, you might go, okay, I'm going to name them that because that is all the things people are going to be searching for. No. What you're going to do is you're going to choose a title that describes these in the best way to sell them, but yet also incorporates keywords that they might be looking for. So I'm not just going to call them tennis shoes, right? Because tennis shoes doesn't really sell them well, and you're not going to rank for tennis shoes, okay? So you're looking to describe your product in a way that it's clean and yet has keywords that people might be searching for. So an example is, what are they using these tennis shoes for? What are these tennis shoes best for? Are these tennis shoes best for hiking or running or basketball? You don't have to make them good for all of them. You don't have to say perfect for hiking, running, basketball, whatever. But you could call these basketball shoes, and already you're starting to narrow yourself in the competition. So people looking for shoes, let's say there was 10 million searches for shoes. Then there might be only 2 million of those searches for basketball shoes. Then you go a little bit further, how many of those searches are for orange basketball shoes? Maybe only 100,000. Well, as you get less and less and less, each word you add is less and less and less competition for that keyword. Next thing you know, you have orange basketball shoes. OK, you're getting more narrow. But you can probably add one or two more keywords to that um, that actually maybe say something about the material or something about the feature of your shoes. So maybe these shoes glow in the dark. OK? Orange glow in the dark basketball shoes. Now you've got a nice product title that explains what they are, and you have good keywords that people might be searching for. That's the concept. Goal number one, each product is a sales page. Goal number two, go through and ask yourself, is my title something people might be searching for? In the description, do I mention these benefits? Like you said, the material it's made out of, um, 
the, what types of use are people using these shoes for? And if they are good for multiple use, let's say people are hiking with these shoes and stuff like that, you would put that in the description. Um, you know, these shoes are very popular as hiking shoes, camping shoes, basketball shoes, whatever. You might put some of those in the description. Don't ever get carried away. Don't stuff your page full of keywords. Find an artistic way to be able to write your ad copy with keywords in there that people might be searching for. So, first of all, feel free to disagree with anything I'm saying because no. you are more of an SEO expert. 100% agree. 100% <laughs> agree. So what, uh, so, what are some more elements? So, if I'm on my product page for mm -hmm. Shopify, mm -hmm. um, there's something called short, short tail keywords and long tail keywords. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of gave an example that mm -hmm. tennis shoes right. versus orange glow in the dark basketball shoes. Right. Can you explain a little bit about the difference of those and what you tend to favor and any tips you'd have for people in writing product descriptions for SEO? Yeah, definitely. You, well, it really depends on the stage that you're at. And so if you're at day one, um, you want to start with a long tail keyword because, like Chris just really well demonstrated, um, there's less competition. So how many stores are out there with this exact type of shoe that you just described? A lot fewer than the people that have orange basketball shoes, right? So you're, you're up against a lot fewer sites when you go up against, uh, when, when you're more specific with your products. Um, so I would say if you're starting out, make all of your products really, really specific. Uh, as specific, specific as you can. Make it, um, you know, don't, don't make it 20 words long. Mm -hmm. um, but everything that's relevant, everything that really sets it apart, put it in there. Um, the big thing is to really, you know, be authentic to the product because you want to rank for the things that you're that you're actually selling, of course. So don't just stuff it with every old thing. Don't don't put green, blue, you know, yellow in there. Don't put, you know, running shoes if it's not a running shoe. You have to be true to what you're you're ranking for. You don't want just random traffic. But um, go as long tail as possible at the beginning. And what's great about going long tail is you, you can have multiple products going after different long tail keywords. That's what's great about uh, Shopify e-commerce. But even those pages that are really specific, they still have a chance to rank for all of those uh, shorter tail keywords um, within it. So you can still rank for orange basketball shoes even if it's orange glow-in-the-dark basketball shoes. You're still in the game for that. Um, and so over time, you'll start to see signs of success. And once you start to rank for just orange basketball shoes, maybe then you launch a new product or you, you know, adjust the title tag at that point. But start long, and then as your store gains in popularity and as you start ranking for stuff, then you can be a little more uh, targeted with your keywords and a little more aggressive about going for the short tail keywords. Yeah, so let's before we move on, let's understand short tail versus long tail. What we're talking about is if a title, we're really talking about in this specific case, the length of a tail is like the amount of words that are in your title or your sentence. Okay, so it's really the tail. An animal might have a longer tail. The longer the tail is, it starts thick and it gets it gets thin at the end. It's kind of a it's kind of just a, an industry term for saying that wow that that title has a long tail on it, meaning it might have even ten keywords in it. The idea is. Keyword combinations. So let's say that I have a title that's called tennis shoes. I have a two keyword combination. Uh, it's really, there's three things that can happen there. Maybe I can show up for the word tennis. Okay, let's say tennis shoes. Maybe I can show up for the word tennis. Maybe I can show up for the word shoes. Or maybe I can show up for the word tennis shoes. There's three combinations. If you have a two word sentence, there's three combinations that can be made out of that. But the reality is, how difficult would it be to show up in the top 10 for the word tennis and the word shoes? Every site in the world is already doing that. So you want to have a longer term. You notice even a two, a word with uh, a sentence with two words gives you three combinations. The word one or word, ter, word two or word one and two. That Now imagine it starts multiplying exponentially. As soon as you add a third word in there, let's say cheap tennis shoes. Now you could rank for cheap tennis shoes or you can rank for cheap shoes, or cheap tennis, or tennis, or shoes, or cheap, or com you said there's multiple combinations. By adding one more word, you're exponentially increasing the combinations. So as soon as you have like 10 words, you have you know, a thousand combinations that could be happening out of that. So when you have a long tail sent uh, keyword sentence, you're getting less traffic overall, but you're getting less traffic on a thousand different combinations. So it's actually better. You got less competition, less people are gonna be searching for orange glow-in-the-dark basketball shoes, 
but you have a better chance at ranking for it because you have less competition. And orange glow-in-the-dark basketball shoes, maybe somebody searches for it without the word orange. You still have a chance for ranking for glow-in-the-dark basketball shoes. Or maybe somebody's not looking for basketball shoes, they're just looking for glow-in-the-dark shoes. You still have a chance to rank for glow-in-the-dark shoes. Because if your title says orange glow-in-the-dark basketball shoes, you still have a chance of coming up for a combination of those words. That's why you want to start with long-tailed keywords. And it's important to have it make sense because again, goal number one is to sell the product on your page. You're driving Facebook traffic there. You don't want to stuff it with keywords. It'll hurt your conversions. So you have to put on your business hat and say, how can I make a product title that is clean yet has keywords? Kenny's telling you, you know, instead of one or two words, maybe go as many as eight, nine, ten words in that title. As long as it makes sense and it's clean, that's what you're looking for. Now you got the title. In the description, if there's other keywords you wish you would have put in the title, like man, you know, like there's so many other things I can think of for this. Put them in the description. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's where you've got extra room. The title in the description, maybe that's what you're saying, but these are really good for running and runners and joggers and this and that. Then put a whole little paragraph in the description. Say, if you're an avid runner or you love jogging on the weekends, then the um, glow in the dark shoes are perfect for joggers because at night, if you're jogging at night, uh, you'll glow and you'll stand out. Now you're giving them a sales pitch as to why these are good for running and jogging, but at the same time, you're also hitting those keywords. You have a chance to get ranked. So on-page SEO is the title, the description, maybe some reviews and stuff like that, and you got products and collections. You start there, day one, day two. Then, after you've got your store built, you're driving some traffic, mm -hmm. you've got your pages kind of optimized, mm -hmm. there's this whole world called off-page SEO. Right. What are some of the things people can do off their site that can help make their site more popular? So one thing is just be authentic, be a real biz business, and kind of the signs of that are uh, social profiles is one. If you're a local business, get your Yelp page, all of that sort of stuff going. Um, but just have real authentic social profiles like your Facebook page, your Twitter page, and make them active. So they don't have to be, uh, you know, you don't have to be tweeting like five times a day, but you should be tweeting a couple times a week, Facebook couple times a week at the very least and if you're getting good reception you know you, more um, a lot of the tactics that you'll be learning in tech academics can can really leverage those platforms beyond just for SEO value so it's naturally going to happen for you mm -hmm. but you want to make sure that those are very active and that you're looking like a real business these signs are something that Google can pick up on uh, pretty easily second and the biggest thing uh, in SEO is getting links back to your site so a, um, and that's a link means not from your own social profiles, not from other sh social profiles, but from other websites. So from somebody's blog, from uh, you know, other product sites, like uh, anywhere on the web uh, where you can just link to back to your site uh, is important. And of course, different types of links are more important. So if you get a link from the New York Times, it's going to be really, really good for SEO because that's a really powerful, well-known site. If you get a link from you know, your, your brother-in-law's blog that he started last week, it's probably not going to be a super powerful link for SEO. It's mm -hmm. not necessarily bad, not ne you don't necessarily not want it, but it's not going to have the same impact. So it, just in terms of power and general authority of the site, uh, as an SEO word, uh, is one thing you need to think about when you're thinking about getting links. The other thing you want to think about is relevance. So if you have uh, a, a basketball site, if there's a bunch of basketball uh, blogs or basketball sites or whatever linking to you, then that's a much better than a bunch of you know, random you know, phishing blogs. Uh, the phishing blogs are not as relevant. Google can tell that, you know, hey, why, you know, it's kind of suspicious. Like, why is that happening? Mm -hmm. it's, um, and so the big things with these links that you want to get back to your site are relevance and power. Got it. So you are looking for authority. You have your Shopify store. You're in a niche. You want to find other websites to link to you that are related to your niche. And then you don't just want any old website to link to you. The stronger those websites are, Google is looking at popularity. They're going, wow, your site, your store is all about basketball products. And here are these popular basketball sites linking to you. Therefore, your store must be popular. Otherwise, why would these popular sites be linking to you? So if your store is popular, we're going to give it a better weight when we figure out how to rank sites in Google, we're going to look at your site and we're going to rank it better. And that's how Google works. It works on this popularity and authority. Google has to present the best search results possible to people that are searching. 
People are relying on Google to serve them good results. They have to figure out a way to figure out if one site should be featured over another. So they look at this popularity, they look at these links, they look at how your site is optimized, they look at all of this, and it all plays a factor. Now, I know that you actually brought your computer here and that mm -hmm. you've got some examples that you could show. Uh, our audience would love to see like an example case study. I'm looking at this one right here. Um, uh, a, a fitness one mm -hmm. in the, the health and fitness industry. Mm -hmm. I'd love if we could just move to the laptop and maybe show them a case study before we wrap up for the day. Let's do it. I okay. would love, and uh, keep in mind this one, it's easy to execute, but a pretty advanced strategy. So that's why I think it's a great one to, to start with. Uh, okay. Very powerful. Let's dive into it. So if we're on the screen here, uh, this is an example blog. And this really was just a blog. He started it less than a year ago. It's called Man vs. Weight, obviously about weightlifting and all of that stuff. Um, What's cool about this site, you know, it's not super fancy site. It's probably just a WordPress site. Um, he's selling a bunch of digital products and stuff, products and stuff. Uh, but he's ranking for some really, really competitive terms, and you can see he's getting hundreds of thousands of visitors to his site. Uh, and I honestly, I suspect the number is a lot larger than that at this point. It might be a bit dated, uh, based on what I'm seeing. I notice he ranked specific, specifically for the word calisthenics. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of no-name blogger. Um, one year later, went ranking for one of the most competitive terms in weightlifting. You know, he's, which he's is this coming term out, right here. Which is calisthenics. You see he's mentioning it there um, all over the site. You'll see it's all about calisthenics. And then naturally, he gets their email address. He sells them calisthenics guide and you know, a lot of other products re related to calisthenics. So he's, he's got what I imagine to be a really great business here. Mm -hmm. um, so one, he's got great content on the site. He, does, he did a good job with the content. But two, he's got a really good strategy that I think is perfect for tech academic uh, members uh, to get links, both powerful and relevant links to his site. And what perfect. it really boils down to is emailing somebody. You just find somebody in your niche that you like uh, that's relevant. So how do you do that? There's no secret sauce here, but we can just do, you know, uh, calisthenics, you know, even with like blogs. So you type in your niche, your keyword, you type in your niche keyword, whatever, and mm -hmm. you search for blogs in your niche. So right. his niche is his his keyword he's going after is calisthenics. Right. Which is a for those of you that don't know that term, it's like a term having to do with working out. It's like kind of like a type of a, a fitness regime, if you will. Right. So he's basically looking for blogs that talk about this because he wants to rank for that word. So if these other blogs link back to him, mm -hmm. that'll increase his chance of getting ranked. Exactly. So, and you can see all of these results. They're kind of like, you know, mid-sized blogs. Some of them really specific to calisthenics. Uh, some of them kind of general sites about weightlifting or, or even things outside of that. But it's kind of what shows up. And you hear you have, you know, 10 results on a page, 100 results just right here. And th this is just for that keyword. And so you can be a little creative in what you type into Google and, and find these other sites. And let's talk about this right here. You typed in the word calisthenics, mm -hmm. but this is an example of a long tail keyword yeah, search here. So yeah. wanna, this is a perfect example. We were talking about this before. They have the word calisthenics, but then they also have the word progressive, which is another description. It's a style. Mm -hmm. They have the word certification, mm -hmm. manual, and PDF. So if somebody's looking for a pro progressive calisthenics PDF, then they'll have it. Okay? Hold on one sec. Hold on one second. We're getting an alert real quick. We're good? Okay. Um, progressive calisthenics PDF, progressive mm -hmm. calisthenics manual, progressive calisthenics certification, any one of those might work. Or maybe take the word progressive out. Calisthenics PDF, calisthenics manual, calisthenics certification. Mm -hmm. So they found a way to be able to, you know, this is an example title that if you have this as the title of, let's say you were selling a PDF mm -hmm. or whatever, this is a good title. Great long, title. Long tail and, keyword. And it's clearly much easier to rank for than the word calisthenics. And hey, great. They're looking to, you know, maybe someone's looking for a free PDF, but a lot of them, I'm sure, would pay money for that. So, mm -hmm. so you have a little, you know, download button, or you have a, for, the, for an email exchange, or you have a, something for sale there. You're going to see a pretty high conversion rate, I'd imagine, because there's so much certain search intent around that keyword. Sure. Okay. So let's go back to the strategy. So this sure. person maybe has a calisthenics blog. So the, yeah. So here's yeah. So all these sites are somebody, you know, you would love a uh, a link from a school of uh, calisthenics, right? Mm -hmm. Very relevant. Looks like a pretty legit site if we click on it. Takes a minute to load here, but you know. so so if I have a calisthenics, let's say Shopify store, if I have a fitness-related Shopify store, 
um, I might want to reach out to this school of calisthenics right here mm -hmm. and see if they'll maybe link to me. Sure, and okay. they'd love to and say, why would why would these guys link to me? You know, I'm just a I'm a new site even, or I, you know, they don't know me, but we're going to show you a little trick. So just go to the, you go to the contact page in all these places. So all the nuts and bolts. There's no reason to stop you from look at here's the email right there reception. All right, take that email, put it in your email, and the question is, what do you say to them? So you found a site you would like to be ranked on. And now you can copy their email and you can reach out to them mm -hmm. and, so say, and say, hey, I would love, um, let's see. Let's see if we can zoom in here. Yeah, let's zoom in on this and let's show this actual screen here. There we go. All right. So this is an example of what you could say. So I love this email for a few reasons. One, hey there, Steve here, the main editor at Man vs. Weight, right? So personal start, it's not just a canned email, right, even though it is. I just came across your post at example. So put in their site and a post that you like, and ideally related to calisthenics, right? So you can say, hey, go to their blog, find a post that's popular or a post that you like, put it in there. I wanted to send you a quick email because I noticed you mentioned a few words about training with kettlebell. So he, maybe it's kettlebell article. Recently, we created something related you might be interested in, the world's largest interactive list of over 100 kettlebell exercises. Here's a link to his site, right? So here's his proposal. If you decide to link to our kettlebell post from uh, the, the post on their site, in exchange, I'll be happy to share your post multiple times in the coming weeks to over 10,000 Facebook fans that we have. What do you think? Would you be interested? Thanks for reading, and please let me know what you think, Steve. So he's right out of the gate giving them exposure for linking to, to his site, right? And like, wow, I've got 10,000 fans. Like, what a great deal for both of them, right? Mm -hmm. um, this is actually kind of brilliant because he's basically saying, he's personalizing it and saying, hey, listen, if you link to me, I'll promote your post on my Facebook fan page to all my fans. But right. that's essentially free for him to do. Yeah. A post is on your Facebook page, and everybody watching right now already has a Shopify store. They already mm -hmm. have a Facebook fan page. Mm -hmm. and that's easy for them to do. They could just share an article. Right. What a great proposition. Share other people's articles on your fan page in exchange for links. Right. And let me show you. Uh, so let's go to his Facebook page. You know, it sounds like, oh, maybe 10,000 is a lot, whatever. So look at his Facebook page. This is the man versus weight. So this is where he's saying, hey, I'll share it with you. And you're like, yep, he's got 10,000 followers here. Um, let's go down and look at it, you know, he's got, he's, so he's sharing popular, other people's popular videos, so it looks like there's a lot of views going on, but whenever he posts an original one, you can see the engagement is, you know, three likes, mm -hmm. right? So I know Techademics is going to teach you how to build better engagement, better engagements, four likes. So really, there, he's, he's not even driving traffic. This might be one he worked with, Nadine for eBlog, right? Yeah, so, you, so, so you don't have to have a lot of engagement for this strategy to work. No. He's only getting four likes, and yet he's still getting deals out of it, most likely. He's getting a lot of deals. And it's not, not to say every person he emails takes him up on his deal, but uh, this is a really advanced strategy in that you can generate some great links back to your site, and ideally even traffic back to your site day mm -hmm. one which you don't always get the SEO traffic, but these are real sites with real visitors themselves, real email lists that I'm sure they're emailing, highlighting their articles. So he's going to start getting traffic uh, back to his site as well, just from the actual links, from the, from the press of it. Okay, so this is an example is he could reach out to this site right here mm -hmm. and say, hey, if you mention me in an article and link to me, then mm -hmm. I'll post, I'll give you some free exposure on my fan page. It's a right. little barter. We don't know if he's done it with, we have, we have no idea if he's done yeah. it with this one. We can look and see. But the concept is that he's sharing a post here. Mm -hmm. Now, you can go on, there's another post he's sharing right there, mm -hmm. you know, muscle cheats. So it's already valuable to be sharing relevant content from your fan page. Mm -hmm. It's already valuable. It doesn't cost you anything because you're just posting it for free, mm -hmm. but you might be able to get some links back. Like in this, in this example, there could be one. We haven't taken the time to, to look at it, and we don't know if there is or not, um, but there could be one. Related products, related, it might take us a second to even figure it out. Who knows if these things are links. Um, if you'd like to learn more about increasing your flexibility. There it is, that's the link that's to his him. site. And look at that, if you'd like to learn more about increasing your flexibility, right there, see how that's a li link? Look, it links back to man versus weight. There it is. So what, so, we just, we just randomly kind of stumbled across that. As you see, what we did is we went to his page, and you see here, he's promoting this person's blog, 
in exchange, that person wrote an article and linked to him. So he's able to, you're able to reach out to so many people and be able to get this kind of free exposure. I mean, he just at some point probably reached out to this person. Maybe they showed up, mm -hmm. you know, in Calisthenics blog or whatever. Right. So this is a great technique that everybody could start applying right now if they wanted. Mm -hmm. But do they see results immediately day one or is this more of a long-term strategy? So this is how you want to think about this. Don't spend all day you know, doing this. this. This is the thing you do. Send, send three emails a day. Uh, send five emails a day. So small numbers, you're not going to get a response every, from everyone. Say you get a response from two people a day. And then you work out a deal with you know, them, you know, one out of 20 emails that mm -hmm. you send. So over time, you're going to get maybe one link a week. So one like this individual link from this one blog that we just showed, that's not going to rank you for anything. You know, it's, it's a good link, but you can't just rank with one link usually. Mm -hmm. But if you start getting one link a week, one, one link a week, one link every two weeks using this strategy, over the period of four, five, six months, you're going to be surprised at how successful your rank is. It's going to come out of nowhere if you do this, do this sort of a mm -hmm. strategy. So just be consistent with it. You know, it takes a few minutes a day to really send it out and really, and then you have to converse with them a little bit. So it takes a little bit of time, um, but you're not going to see those results right away. But I would guarantee you, if you are consistent with this strategy, like he has been, he's less than a year, but I'm sure he's sending these emails every day a little bit, then you're going to see some really powerful results with your site. Awesome. So let's, let's wrap up today's episode on that note. So what we did was we talked about SEO, on-page SEO, off-page SEO. Uh, Kenny gave some great tips, and then Kenny just broke down a strategy. Not only did he give you a script that you can go search and find other people with blogs related to your industry, a script that you can use to reach out to them, and if they'll write about your Shopify store and link to you, or your website, or your blog, or whatever it is, and link to you, then you can go ahead and share their post from your fan page. Now, he also gave you a little trick with the fan page that you can share a couple of popular videos as well, and it looks like your fan page has even more engagement when you're first getting started. But it's essentially free for you to organically post from your fan page. What a great win-win proposition. And the most important thing you said is that it's daily consistent actions over time that pay off. Mm -hmm. If you do this once or twice, you probably don't see many results. Mm -hmm. But if you can stick to it, even if it doesn't happen for a year from now, one day Google will have like an update. And next thing you know, your site, your store, that maybe you haven't been getting a lot of sales from, just suddenly boost the search engines, and you're gonna hear stories in the group all the time of people that are going, oh my God, I'm not even advertising, and I'm making sales right now. A lot of those sales are gonna come from Google. People are just gonna find your products. They're, people are searching in Google every single day. You could be ranking, you could be getting found. So what, what final thoughts do you have in terms of people being able to take action? What, what's like your best advice for how people can take immediate action start doing something with their blog and any kind of like to stick in there and really stick this thing out and see this thing out long term. Sure. So big thing is start today. Don't spend the whole day doing it, but do something today and learn a little bit. So start adjusting your descriptions, start doing some of those long tail uh, product descriptions we were talking about. Get started and start making the small steps. Make it a part of your process so that you start to see these results in the long term. If you say, I'm going to start tomorrow, you're probably not going to. It's going to be too late. You know, it's not too late, but it's you're you're going to be, um, you know, uh, not procrastinating. Procrastinating. Yeah. yeah. You want to start moving right now and waiting for the results later on, which is not the best sales pitch. Mm -hmm. SEO is not a great sales pitch until you get the results, and then there's nothing better. It's, yeah. it's that free traffic. It's that guaranteed source of income. You can have the worst converting product page, you know, the ugliest photos, and if you're getting free traffic to it, you're going to sell something, you know, it's like one out of every whatever. Um, and Chris can teach you how to do the rest of it and be the best, and so you don't have the worst converting page ever. Yeah, and I'll, the reason I wanted to introduce SEO now is because it's one of those little daily actions that you're going to want to do now, and if you just wait three to six months, you're going to wish you would have done it early on. So here's your homework assignment. Look at your product titles. Do they have keywords in them that you're looking to rank for? Look at your descriptions. Do they have keywords in there or things you're looking to rank for? And uh, look at your collections. Are your collections named something well? Start with that. Kenny gave you a day one, day two thing you could do right now. Then work on a plan. Maybe something like this, maybe something similar where you're setting up your social media profiles and giving yourself a brand and bartering with people. Hey, I'll promote your article from my page if you're willing to add me into your article. You can find an existing article. Another great little tip I'll give you is that sometimes when you're going through and researching other sites, people will have like top 10 lists or something, uh, maybe top 10 uh, martial arts uh, stretching 
sites or whatever, they might be linking to 10 people. If you click through, maybe one of those links is broken. If you ever come across a, a list and one of the links is broken, what a great opportunity to contact them and say, hey, I noticed link number seven is broken in your top 10 list. You know, I personally have a, you know, a, a site that has an article about this exact thing. I'd love it if you would swap out, um, you know, swap out that broken link for my link. Um, and in exchange, I'd be willing to even promote your article to my fan page. So there's great ideas. And we'll probably talk a little bit more about this maybe in the coming months mm -hmm. as people start to establish their sites more. Sure. So hopefully you guys enjoyed today's lesson. Again, Kenny Klein, uh, I'll, I'll make sure to give him a link to be able to review the comments, be able to look at the engagement you guys have here. If you guys enjoyed it, then comment below. Let him know if you really enjoyed the value and if you think that it's been a very uh, good use of your time today. And right. by the way, Kenny, thanks for coming out and sharing with us. It was great us. to be here. Thanks a lot. Awesome. All right, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.